What up, what up, what up? What's going on, Los Angeles? I am here today at Rubbing Elbows with the handsome Chucksters and Lior. Say hello, hello. What's up? What up, what up? Okay, um, in my native tongue, I want to say namaste, and let's get this party started. <laughs> Okay, so today's topic is a fun one. I feel like it's something that all realtors think about. We don't really speak about it, but it is a topic that I feel should be discussed considering the way the market is going right now. Um, today, we're going to talk about generational mindset of real estate. And before we get into it, I feel like we need to break down the demographic. Uh, according to Boston University, the um, generations are labeled as 1946 to 64 are the baby boomers. So that's age 58 to 76. And the economy was literally living off of the baby boomers just up until recently. Yep. Um, the next one you have is the Gen Xers. That's ages 52 to 57. So that's 1965 to 1980. The next one is Gen Ys, a.k.a. Millennials. That's right. That's what's up. <laughs> um, ages 26 to 41. I might be a little bit closer to the last part of it, but it's all good. Hey, and, and for all of those out there that don't believe when I tell them I'm still a millennial, there's your proof right there. Damn right. And then you have the Gen Zers, a.k.a. iGen. Apparently, that's the generation that's more... Um, what do you want to call it? Uh, they've been brought up with technology. The spoiled ones? Yeah, 10 exactly. to 25? 10 to 25, right? 10 to 25 is their age. You know, a lot of people, I actually did, I never knew what I was until until just now. So finally, he me? found out that he's a baby boomer. No, am I a bo <laughs> No, I'm not a baby boomer. I'm a Gen X. I'm a Gen X. 42 to 57, I'm a Gen X. You better say it with conviction. What are you? I'm a Gen X. Damn right you are. But for anybody who's under 42 and over 26, is that you? You're a millennial. That's we me. Are a millennial. Yeah. And then Gen Z, Gen Z is anybody under 25. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Now, what does that mean for us on this topic? I have a little statistic for Los Angeles County. Do you know that there's more than 10.1 million residents here in the county of Los Angeles? Median age is 38.1. So that means they are? Single. Are we? Uh, is this a pop quiz? They're millennials. Are we supposed to be paying Hello, attention? millennials. <laughs> okay. And so what's really awesome. 10 million awesome, millennials? 10 million millennials. No, no, no. The median age oh. of those 10 million. Okay, okay. okay, is okay. Chuck, pay attention. You're on camera. I'm just producer Seriously. Leor today. I'm okay. not even on camera. All right. You I'm just here. hear my voice like the voice of God. Okay. What's pretty awesome is the fact that out of that 10 million, a little over 50%, 50.7% are female. That's right. <laughs> Who run the world? Girls. Okay. So now that we got that data out of the way. So my question to you is, does this mean that majority of LA residents are millennials? I think they're definitely Democrats. <laughs> well, Listen. the answer is no. It's actually baby boomers. Baby boomers are roughly about half okay. of the residents here in L.A. So now we get into question is, what is the mindset of the baby boomer as far as real estate compared to the mindset of a millennial? Okay, now Ooh, do that's we? That's a great question. Do we want to put ourselves in a, in the shoes of a real estate agent trying to figure out like, hey, where are the listings coming from, or where are the next transactions coming from? Like, like I'm trying to position the intent behind the question to figure out like what we can extract from it. Okay. Okay. We can go with that. Is there another way to go? No. It's always your way to go. <laughs> we're saying that the the baby boomers are really going to be the ones that sell off first, right? They're going to be the ones that, that are going to be selling off first, whether yes. they like it or not. I mean, unfortunately, right? It's life. Well, so, they're, they're, they're the ones that are kind of leaving the marketplace, mm -hmm. but they're still clients because they need to transfer assets, transfer properties. And then you have the newer generations who are coming into the marketplace and starting to acquire the assets. So... It's very tricky because the mindset is completely different between, you know, a baby boomer and a millennial. Like, 
it couldn't be more opposite. So as a business, how do you build to be able to service both or do you just focus on one? Hmm. That's very interesting. I, I wouldn't even know how to. That's that's on you, Sheena. OK, so I have something um, that I read, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, there is something called a silver tsunami. OK, silver tsunami. OK, so apparently a silver tsunami is where the baby boomers are going to be either transitioning out of their assets, whether it be into senior facilities, whether it be a passing, whether it be just selling and moving out of state, whatever the case is, the silver, the silver tsunami is this phenomenon where there's going to be an influx within the next couple of years mm -hmm. um, of properties coming into the market. Now, how do you guys feel about that? Do you think that is something that would take an effect, especially here in the LA market? I, I feel like estate attorneys are going to be busy <laughs> as hell because it's true. There's a lot. Listen, there's a lot of you know misconception on how to handle your assets. And there's actually a big push right now with financial advisors that are trying to transfer generational wealth while the parents are still alive. Mm -hmm. And that's becoming a really big thing right now because you're able to kind of transfer assets and benefit from all the estate tax benefits and you know so that that's you know that's going to be a pretty hot topic over the next couple so, of years so you saying that i have to give a shout out to um austin grant who did that really cool video austin grant is a a partner of ours he's a content creator with rubbing elbows he did an amazing video really explaining a really in a simple way how to transfer assets, right? It was a, he did a video where a father is like, hey, I'm going to be, you know, passing soon. I'm going to give you this home. And the son's like, no, don't, don't put that home under my name. I don't want to be responsible for all these taxes. Put it in the family trust. Put me as the beneficiary. That way it doesn't have to go to probate. Doesn't have to go through this. Doesn't have to get reassessed. All these things, right? So yes, that is a big topic. Maybe that is a way of reaching some of these people. Maybe through probate attorneys or or estate not probate attorneys estate attorneys uh, uh, estate planners i want to go watch people. that video now i know i was actually thinking maybe we should put that link put that link to this right there right down there, below right there yeah not below the table but you know below um <laughs> we can pay him under the table <laughs> you mean he's paying us under the table? yeah so that's that's something we we should definitely uh chop up and talk about Okay. Like estate planners are in touch with these people mm -hmm. that already have been through that mindset, have had already the thought and say, hey, let's put the property in a trust, right? Now, when when they pass, right, when your baby boomers pass and their heirs get these properties, a lot of them inherit the property. They don't necessarily want to move into it. They want to sell it. Yes. You know, they want to fight with their siblings over it. One, you know, it is what it is, right? So maybe we should be mindful to be to get in contact, like whoever's watching, like you're a realtor, like get in, talk, get in contact with a few estate planners and position yourself to be that guy that helps to sell it when it is ready to be sold. I think that is a great topic, um, Chuck, and thanks for bringing that up. Maybe we should bring an estate planner connoisseur on the show and have them chop it up about what needs to be happening behind the scenes to help these baby boomers with their heirs and transferring their assets without having any major liabilities. That's that, a great idea. That's a great idea. We Maybe have. we should put like something in the comments, you know, if the audience is interested in having an estate planner come on the show and discuss the nitty gritties, put your comments below and we'll make sure that happens. I like it. I love it. So I have uh, a wrench to throw in your game over there. Do you feel that, the way health studies are showing baby boomers compared to older generations have a longer lifespan. And then that could also be somewhat of an issue as to why inventory may be a little bit lower for millennials to purchase. And the fact that we are focused more on getting new construction out there because we're running out of homes. That is quite the ranch. Um, <laughs> it's a big one. You know, because, yeah, the, the life expectancy is definitely 
definitely uh, higher than, you know, the previous ones where, you know, their smoking was okay and this was okay and people weren't health conscious. So uh, definitely, definitely a, a very good point to bring up. Um, but when you say it's an issue that these people are living longer, I don't think it's an issue. Like, you're trying to kill them off? No, definitely not. <laughs> I'm just saying as far as real estate yeah. is concerned, yeah. do you think because of the longevity of this generation, baby boomers, that it could be affecting turnover of real estate? Yeah, that's a good point. It's really a or good point. Or could be one factor, because I'm sure there are many. You know, so I will say this. Even if it is a factor, there's only 20% of these baby boomers that are really, truly health conscious. The rest of them, you know, you can't teach old dogs new tricks. They're not staying away from the things that they love, uh, the things that they've grown to love, the things that bring them, you know, joy, like apple pie and ice cream and whatever it is they're comfortable eating. But you do have that 20% that actually did incorporate you know, walking and doing some, you know, healthy activities. So those might be, you know, those are, are inventories that are not going to come on for a little bit longer. But, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, there's still that 80% that will come. So I think it's a great point to bring up. I don't know how much it'll really affect the inventory. Okay. Just thought I'd put it out there. Very interesting point, though. Okay, so now let's get back to the mindset of baby boomers and um, versus millennials as far as real estate is concerned. From what I've seen in market, I've noticed that baby boomers are heavy on real estate investments as opposed to millennials that like to diversify their investments. Now, what could that look like? Obviously, real estate will be in the picture. Stocks, not so much bonds, crypto. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that? So I feel like the millennials are investing in things that um, some of that older generation would never imagine to invest in. Like when you look at uh, Logan Paul with his million dollar Pokemon card, you know, and it's like, what the fuck? Like yeah. a million dollars for a card? And then you've got these younger kids. They're like, uh-huh. You see? You see, mom? It does work, you know, and these are the same kids that are pointing at their mom. You see, mom, I don't have to go to school. I could be on Twitch making money, streaming my, you know, I could do that. Yeah. You know, I mean, you look at Mr. Beast. That's exactly what happened. He lied to his mom about going to college, wasn't going to college, was studying YouTube. And now he has 200 million subscribers and a virtual burger joint all over the U.S. And he's just making tens of millions of dollars a month in income. You know, with that said, I feel like there's a lot of, um, what do you call it when it's like, like exception to the rule, right? It's like... Um, unicorns. Yeah, there's a lot of unicorns. Like, like Mr. Beast is a unicorn. If every kid in America was like, you know what? No, I don't want to go to school. I don't want to read. I don't want to, I want to do, I want to be a content creator. You know, I want to be a digital influencer like Mr. Beast. Sure. You know, a hundred million kids are going to go do that. Maybe, you know, 400 of them are actually going to push through and make money off of it, you know? Same goes for Twitch, same goes for YouTubers, same goes for a, a lot of these. Same goes for real estate, same goes for anything, right? Any At industry, the end of the yeah. day, it's an 80-20 rule, and you only have 20% of any uh, industry that is generating 80% of the revenue for, for that industry. Listen, I agree with you 100%. However, real estate is actual work. You can't agree with me and then say, however... Okay, let me rephrase that. <laughs> let me rephrase that. You're right. I agree with you 50%. Okay? Real estate is work. Real estate is work. You have to go. You have to get licensed. You have to do a lot of stuff to make money. Uh, blowing up balloons on, on YouTube and making millions of dollars, that's not the same. Okay, that's I, not apples I, and apples. Th th then I disagree with you. And well, I let's will, take this and, outside and then. I will, <laughs> I will tell you why I disagree. Because... When people see someone like Mr. Beast or like Logan Paul, they see a finished product. Now, mm -hmm. yes, there are exceptions to the rule, and there's people that came from a you know celebrity status family, and they have that extra push or whatever the case may be. But people don't see the mm -hmm. amount of hours work and, and years that Mr. Beast had to put in 
before he became successful and the investment that he put in himself, just like an athlete, right? You see Kobe Bryant and you see the greatest basketball player on earth, but you don't see what it took for him to become the greatest. So you just assume, you know, he was born naturally gifted. It's not natural. You know what that's called? That's called the highlight reel. And I mm-hmm. feel like in our in our mindset nowadays, we're so focused on everyone's highlight reel that we forget to take into consideration what it takes to make those moments hit the highlight reel. I, I'd like to point out, you know, there's a book called uh, Outliers, okay, Malcolm Gladwell. He talks about all these different, like, incredibly successful people and what their circumstances were, right? Like, he talks about Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, Like, they were just regular kids, but, like, I think it was Bill Gates or one of them, the mom was, like, you know, involved in some HOA that they had, like, a little clubhouse that had a little computer, and he had access to it, and he just messed with it, messed with it. He got so much more advanced than any other kid, you know? Years later, wouldn't even get to this access that he had, but, you know, access that he had with this computer, right? He talks about hockey players, how... Okay, you know, what advantage what advantage did you have over all these other hockey players? How did you make it so good so big? And it mm-hmm. turn it takes them all the way back to him being like, you know, the the you know, he stayed behind the class. What do you call it when you're you staying behind? After school? So, no, no, no. Like he was supposed to go to second grade, but he got mm-hmm. held back, held and then back, he was yeah. like the biggest student in the class, and that gave him more confidence, and that confidence, you know, you know, interpreted into all these different things. All of a sudden he's like NHL now, you know, whatever, whatever, right? I think same goes here. You've got a lot of people that have advantages that we might not see. You're saying that Kobe Bryant wasn't naturally gifted. His dad was a basketball player. I didn't player. say he's not. But I'm saying that if he didn't put in the same level of work ethic as he did, he wouldn't have been the greatest. The reason he's the greatest is because he was the first one in the gym, the last one out of the gym. If he messed up on something, he perfected that screw up. So that next time it wouldn't happen again. He was his number one, um, you know, critic, fan yeah. critic, and he was always competing with himself, not anybody else. Mm-hmm. So anytime he got to a certain level, he had to take it up a notch. And you know what? A lot of people also use the terminology. You know, that person was lucky. He was at the right place at the right time, or mm-hmm. he, you know, his mom worked at so and so, so she connected him. And I heard somebody say this, and, and, I, and I love this. I live by this. Luck, luck is the definition of opportunity meeting skill at the right time. Because you can't get lucky if you're not good at what you do. And yes, maybe you got lucky and you had an opportunity. But if you didn't have the skill to close that opportunity, luck doesn't matter. You're right. And I will say this. I walk around with this shirt. Lucky Chucky. Okay. There's a reason for it. I always wear lucky because I want to be in that mindset. I am fucking lucky. I always want to be in that l- mindset. Blessed. Okay. Um, but going back to what you just said, there's a, a, a line that Tony Robbins says that's just so fucking perfect. And he says this. He says, people are publicly praised, you know, for all that stuff that they privately work on and perfect. You know, so we only see the highlights. We only see of them winning the. We don't see them working their balls off to get to where they're at. You know, crying so, in the corner, yeah. pushing themselves. You know, you don't yeah. see any of that. And you don't know what pushes them. Like you look at Caitlyn Jenner. Okay, he's the most extreme example in the world. Okay, world champion runner, right? Just the best athlete in the world was on a Wheaties uh, cereal box. That that's like that was a big thing in the eighties. He talks about it now. Now that he's a woman, he's transitioned, talks about, like, I was running away from, like, the person that I was. So you don't know what drives people. Like, you seriously don't know what drives people. All right. I know I'm very passionate. I'm very passionate about this. That was a hard right we took. Yeah. (laughs) Let's get back back on track. Get back. Okay. So next um, topic I want to pose here is for the millennial mindset, as far as real estate is concerned, I feel like there's more leniency towards being convenient or um, more towards lifestyle than having to save up and having to purchase real estate. Now, what do you think those factors could be? Do you think it's maybe a majority of Los Angeles are self-employed or they have their own businesses where, you know, it's a matter of being convenient or, you know, they have that type of lifestyle um, where they want that flexibility and not having to stay committed 
to real estate or to a property compared to a baby boomer's mindset? What are your thoughts on that? I would say that, you know, I'm curious if, if the statistics also show what the rental, like the renters versus owners are, right, with millennials. Mm -hmm. And I bet you there's an 80-20 uh, in there too. Like millennials, 20% of them own, 80% of them rent. I bet you, I don't know, I have a feeling that that's what that would be because I feel like millennials were raised by YouTube Millennials were raised by MTV. We were, you know, millennials were raised by TV. Okay. Yeah. So um, a lot was easily accessible. It is more for convenience. Uh, they're 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 more comfortable in their skin. I think the ones that are that are not really looking to invest. They're looking to live today. They're looking to be present. A lot of them. The twenty percent that wants to buy and own and do this and that, the other are are the ones that are a little bit more serious, according to our standards, you know, my standards as a Gen Z. But who's to say that millennials renting is not the right way to go? They have less stress. They don't have property taxes. They don't have the headaches of being a homeowner. Who's to say that's not the right way of doing things? Maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I so. just made it on camera, by the way. What's up, y'all? <laughs> Okay. You show that money maker off, Lior. There you go. I'm in the <laughs> producer table today. Tell me what you think about me as the producer in the comments below. Am I doing a good job? Am I switching the cameras right? Now that we've uh, talked about the baby boomers and the millennials, what about the iGens, right? What the hell is an iGen? What is an iGen? Come on, guys. I went over it earlier. <laughs> Gen Zs. You didn't take Oh, notes? Gen Z. Yes. Oh, okay. are they called iGen because they were iGen. born around iPhone? Yeah. Got it. Okay. Oh, nice. I didn't even nice. catch that. Wow. So insightful. iGen. Okay. So what do you think their mindset is going to be about real estate? Because now they're, they've been brought up on technology. And you have the metaverse. You have virtual reality. You have, what's that game that all the kids are playing? The Fortnite. Fortnite. Fortnite, right? So yeah. they're already building their own virtual spaces. Yeah. So I heard something. I don't know if it's true or not. It's just an opinion because I agreed with this thing that I heard. Right. It's like the difference between like Gen Z and, you know, even millennials compared to older generation like the boomers and the, the Chuck generation is that. What you call my generation? <laughs> the, the lucky generation. I'd so, get up and punch you if my arthritis wasn't killing me right now. <laughs> There's the jet that joke. Whatever, I'm not gonna even bleep. Doesn't even <laughs> watch it bleep me. Go on. So the point, the the point I'm, I'm you know, kind of getting to is that the older generation needed a lot of hand holding, right? Like a realtor was the most important thing to have because there was no access to MLS. You couldn't get, you know, data online. You had to know a realtor if you wanted to get any information about any kind of property. Um, but they got into the habit where they needed that hand holding they needed that extra level of service and the newer generations still need that but they don't want it up front they want space right they want to be left alone to kind of do their yes. research yes they want to figure things out and then when it comes time to execute they need an expert so it cannot go 100 percent techie they're gonna need you know the professionals but when, you know, uh, any, any industry, uh, whether it's lending or, or real estate or any kind of sales, when, when they're freaking out that, you know, machines and technology and apps are replacing us, you have to kind of remind yourself, you just need to adapt. You need to give them the space to kind of do their own research. They don't want to be bothered. They don't want to be hounded. They'll let us know when they're ready. And when it's they're ready, like they're going to need right? that. It's like that, what? That, dating, well, we, like we a three-day rule. We haven't <laughs> dated in 20 years, so I don't, I don't even know how dating works nowadays. It doesn't. I've heard <laughs> there's still a process, yeah. but it would just be like dating. You know, you catch up, you know, have a little coffee, talk the talk, walk the walk, whatever. But even before and then you catch you give up, space. before you catch up, even then, you're doing, you're doing your due diligence. You're going through the Instagram, seeing what they're up to, boom, boom, boom. What yeah. are they checking? What are they eating? Da, 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 da. They, what, what's, are they Republicans? Are they Democrats? Is he wearing a MAGA hat? Is she wearing a this? Like, are they're they looking into that. Yeah. 
But what are they looking at? Why are they doing that? Are we still talking about real estate? Yeah, are we because about the houses. That's what they're doing in the house. I or feel like about the real estate agents. Yeah, what Leor was saying was was a good point. Is they want to do their own due diligence yeah. prior to being like, give me space. Let me do my own due diligence. Right. Like if you you've probably experienced this too. If you're speaking to like a young buyer and you call them, they're sending you a voicemail. Yeah. Text me. I'm not looking to talk to anybody. Text me. My own mom, like, text me. Okay? I'll call you when I have a minute. Otherwise, text me. Sorry, mom. I love you. Um, but that goes for everybody. Unless it's my wife calling me or my kids, everybody else, text me. Or Lior. Lior is now made it to pass that. But everybody else, text me. Like, I, And I'm not even an, a, an I... What was it? You're a boomer. Yeah, but what was the... Name I, of Jen. The, I Jen. I'm not even an I Jen. And I still want space. So imagine these people, like, they're not trying to talk to anybody. Yeah. You know, they did research. Uh, I, I can't remember who, but, uh, you know, one of these research companies, they, they did research that said, I think it was actually Zillow uh, hired a company to do research that um, millennials, 67% of millennials have, uh, have agreed that cereal is an inconvenient breakfast. Like, just to take the time to actually pour cereal in a bowl, mm. go to the fridge, grab milk, and put it in a bowl, it's too inconvenient. It's all, like, grab and go. It's like, you know, mobile app, pick it up from Starbucks on the way, don't even wait in line. That is kind of how things are getting. So it's like, you know, they, they have to do it at their pace, their way. But in the end, they do need the experts. Going back to Going back to what you said about wanting you know they they don't want they want to be left alone right like they see a house first of all they know what neighborhood they want to be in right yeah they know what neighborhood they want to be in they know approximately what price range they want to be in if they go on zillow zillow redfin truia whatever all those different right there you've got a loan calculator how much down payment are you yeah. putting you know 10 years ago 20 years ago you needed an agent you needed a loan mortgage to help you with this you needed to find this person that person this you already have a zestimate you already know what it's worth you already know what you're putting down yeah, you already I know what your payments when, are going to be when yeah. i get a call from someone and they're like hey can you just tell me like on a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage what my payments are going to be immediately i'm like you're 42 plus aren't you <laughs> yeah i guess so i guess so <laughs> erase that joke <laughs> a little flat all right he just turned 40 he really did last week i did oh yes happy belated i gave you, you a shout out and said did you. you see it yes i responded so we've definitely uh, established and it's just we've established like the the, the i gens yes and the millennials want to be left alone yes however the baby boomers, keep them on. They will keep you on the phone. They're not trying to text with you. They're not trying to catch an email. They're not trying to circle back on Insta later. No, call me. Talk to me now. And they'll tell you, hey, you want to talk to me? Pick up the phone and call me. <laughs> no, I don't want to talk to you that bad. Actually, that is true. Um, when I have clients that are in the baby boomer um, section, what I'll do is I'll have a conversation with them and I'll send them a text message about the conversation or I'll send them a text message saying, hey, let me know when you have a few minutes. I want to talk about ABC with you. Let me know when's a good time to chat. And then they'll give me a call. Yeah, but, I always also very like chat. I'm using the word chat. Come yeah. on. I'm not going to drag you into a big discussion. Chat. I'll even throw. Quick check in. <laughs> yeah. Brief chat. You know. 40 minutes later. <laughs> Hey, just uh, respond one if you want to talk today. Respond two if you want to talk tomorrow. You know, it's a <laughs> shitty situation. Blink if you understand. <laughs> yeah. Or voice notes. Those are my favorite. I know they're your favorite. You're the only one that does the voice notes. You know, everybody no, no. I talk to. You don't know enough Israelis then because. <laughs> that's all they do, really? That's all we do. Everyone I talk to who's not Israeli always tells me. You're the only one I know that uses his voice notes. I hate those fucking voice notes. I'm like, I love those voice notes. Yeah, but, you know, even my wife tells me, you know, if I'm driving and I'm listening to the radio, I get a voice note. I have to press play. It takes over my whole system, my whole music. I don't want to hear you on surround yeah. sound, honey. Yeah. I don't want to hear you in surround sound. <laughs> so, yeah. So what are we going to do different or what are you going to do different well, I think this was a great conversation to understand how the mindset is. 
between the different demographics of our clients. And that's kind of what I wanted to touch base on today because there is a significant difference and there is a significant difference on how they see real estate as an investment. Um, baby boomers, obviously it is a priority. Millennials, I feel like it's secondary, right? Primary investments would be something like crypto or stocks right now. And then eventually that money is gonna help them with their purchase of real estate. Baby boomers, real estate first. And then that will help us with other things down the line. Yeah. That's you know, just how I see the two mindsets. I saw on Jimmy Fallon yesterday, he's, he was talking about Elon Musk buying Twitter. And mm -hmm. he was like, he is going, you know, he is going to slowly like only hire like the young, young people. Because there's also talks of him buying Fortnite, but mm -hmm. it hasn't been like publicized. I just hear about it from like my eight-year-old kid who's telling me they're talking about it like in the chat rooms. That's like awesome. that's a conversation. That's a conversation. Like when is he going to buy it? Anyway, so if Jimmy Fallon says like, would you prefer to be paid in V-Bucks? You guys know what V-Bucks are? Yeah. It's no. the money. It's the currency. I used to buy Fortnite. them for my daughter. Like, Oh, the, at, okay, okay. At the checkout at Ralph's, I used to buy her the card because then you at least get like a little, you know, gift with yeah, it, like yeah. an outfit or, you know. I also used to buy them for myself, but that's... Yeah. That's a different conversation. So I asked my son, here's your, here's a perfect conversation, like a for perfect example. I asked my son, I said, do you want just like V-Bucks or do you want to go to college one day? He said V-Bucks, you know, and can you blame him? No. You can do pretty much everything. Do you know that within the next few years, you'll be able to order like through the Fortnite, you'll be able to order like on Postmates or whatever and pay with V-Bucks. And Postmates is going to be able to automatically convert that currency to dollars, whatever it's worth, dollar versus V-Bucks. So but just, does that actual order come to your yes, door? Yes, to your door. So your physical world gets the order Yes. and you eat in your physical world. Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah. That's awesome. That's fucking awesome. Especially if, you know, some of these kids, they're trading off, like, like they're trading off weapons and they're trading off, like, outfits and... And weird shit. I don't know. I'm not really into Fortnite. I just watch my son play. I was like, this is fucking dope. Yeah. Hey, like, hey, comment below if you're into Fortnite. Okay, so hopefully we're going to get some comments down here for you to bring uh, an estate planner. I actually have someone in mind. Mm. I know. Perks of being part of the Exchange Network LA. Yes. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Like, what are the, you know, things that you've done outside of just typical day-to-day, -day, you know, work, uh, leads, door knocking, all that stuff, which is standard. What have you done that has kind of helped your career in terms of, like, just building relationships? Um, I think the number one thing is networking inside your industry and outside of your industry. So I'm part of two networks right now. Um, I'm with Women's Council Realtors Los Angeles. This year, I am events director. Um, the past two years, I was president. And that helped me get myself introduced to a lot of top agents in the area. And um, that really means a lot when you're trying to put offers in or you're looking at homes, or you're trying to get off-market information. You've built your relationship, so you've built a foundation. Um, with the Exchange LA network, that's a professional network. So each network or chapter has um, a limit to how many real estate agents can be part of each uh, chapter, how many trust attorneys, probate attorneys. Uh, there's up to two or three, I believe. So Yeah, aren't those like impossible to get into? I got into it, honey. Let me tell you. And it's amazing because you just literally you sign up and now you've just expanded your Rolodex, right? If I have a client that is in need of some trust information, I'm not going to be talking about it, but... Let me tell you, I got three people and I'll send their information. I'll send them an email saying, hey, I have forwarded your information to client XYZ, but along with two other names, because I always like to give three. And because you never know, my chemistry might be good with you, may not be so good with Lior, but whatever the case is, you want to make sure that you client find someone that they're comfortable with. So that's why it's so important to be part of networks that are outside of your industry, because you never know what strings you need to pull. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was definitely a, a interesting episode to talk about things that we all kind of know. Like we all kind of know that there's your digital world and and crypto and investments here and 
And, you know, we all know that our parents speak a certain way and our younger cousins and whatever see things a certain way. Yeah. You know, so it's nice to like talk about it and, and kind of bring it to light. And just like if you're watching it, just know you're not the only one thinking about it. Like, you know, when you're talking to your parents and you're like, OK, bye, mom, love you. And she doesn't hang up <laughs> for whatever reason. They don't hang up. They're just listening. Let's see what you're up to. We love you, moms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that generation will do that. You hang up with somebody who's over 50 years old. All right. Thanks. Bye. They're not hanging up until you hang up. I don't know why, <laughs> but they don't. But the younger generation, you're like, I right, but Oh, you hung up. You know, they'll hang up or they just get it's me like, off the phone. It's, it's like What's the average first... amount of buys that you hear, though, when you're trying to say bye? Like five, six buys? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, you hang up first. <laughs> no, that's dating. That's, that's different. Dating. That's you not with first. mom. Yeah, no, it's not with mom. <laughs> well, I want to thank you, gentlemen, for helping me discuss this topic. I think we hit the nail on the head, and I'm excited for more topics to come. I um, want to do a quick shout out to Women's Council Realtors Los Angeles. We have a our annual top producer auction happening next Wednesday, November 9th, 6 to 9 p.m. We have some heavy hitters that are going to be auctioned off, so we're really stoked. And... Drum roll. We He's looking for the drum roll button. <laughs> <laughs> we got, and keep going. I don't have it, but I have this one. It may okay. not mean nothing We have at all. a new sponsor for our event, our very own Rubbing Elbows family. Whoop, whoop. That's what's so up. I'm really, yes, that definitely Calm down, people, applause. calm down. <laughs> so I'm really stoked about that to show us off at our event and um, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be a bunch of realtors. We're going to be getting Lady Titty, having fun, auctioning <laughs> off our finest. What'd you say? I know. What? Am I not allowed to say that? I didn't know what you said. I don't know what I said. I'm not saying it <laughs> Did again. Did she say Lady Titty? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. I'm saying we're going to have a great time. There's okay. going to be snacks, appetizers. I knew, I knew you heard that. I switched margarita. the camera to you the second <laughs> she said it because I knew. Because you know what happened you with that, that TikTok person that one time, right? <laughs> You remember? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We were at an event. I got to share this. We were at an event, and this girl goes, she said, I'm such a TikTok bore. I'm no. such. Um, she's like, uh, she, okay, go on. And I was like, bro, did she say I'm just a TikTok whore? She's sitting with her dad. He's like, no, she didn't say that. I was like, I don't know. I think she said I'm a TikTok whore. No, she said. <laughs> she said it's just me dorking around on my TikTok. I'm a TikTok dork, maybe she said. That's what she said. Whew. And what did you hear? I heard her saying I'm a TikTok whore. And I was like, yo, we got to get her on the show. No, I'm kidding. Um, but um, that was just funny. Anyway, so we're going to be there. Sagebrush. Sagebrush right? Cantina in Calabasas um, next Wednesday on the 9th. Six to nine, it's gonna be a blast. Amazing! I'm gonna be there. Leo's gonna be there. Bring your checkbooks. Last year we're record breaking. We pulled in over twenty thousand dollars. She fundraising, fun raising. So we're about to have some more fun this time. How much did Gina Michelle uh, get for her? Um, for I don't lunch remember. With Gina Michelle? I don't remember her exact number, but Yana. Mm -hmm. Brought Yana Chernov. She brought in six grand. I mean, that was straight mic drop. Who paid for it? LCD Capital Escrow. Mm -hmm. Of course, Diana. Diana. Damn right, Diana. Baller. Bad bitch. But can you remind me, Yana Chernoff, is she with the... I'm kidding. We know who Yana is. Of course Where's we know Yana who Yana at? is. Yeah. All right. We are out officially. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We appreciate you. Any comments you have for our podcast today, let us know. And any recommendations, suggestions as far as topics that you want to hear about, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you and see you soon. Bye. Thank you.